So what exactly is Microsoft Dataverse? So you might have heard about Power Apps or the Power Platform and might be wondering where Dataverse fits into that. In this video, I'll be covering the concept behind Dataverse and how organizations around the world are using it to solve their business problems. So if your company is using Power Apps, then there are good chances that you are already using Dataverse to store and manage your data. Dataverse is part of Microsoft Power Platform, which is the Microsoft no-code, low-code platform for building custom applications or extending some of the Dynamics 3x5 apps with additional capabilities. So the Power Platform is made up of key components. So Power Apps lets you create custom business applications without writing code. It provides an easy to use interface to create or modify fields, form lists, and many more. Power BI is the business intelligence and data visualization tool that provides real-time insights into an organization's data. Power Automate lets you create automated processes and workflows. Power Virtual Agents, it, uh, it's a chatbot creation tool that enables organizations to build chatbots without writing code using a visual interface. Power Pages let you create, host, and administer external facing websites. And finally, Dataverse, which securely store and manage data that's used by business applications. Data within Dataverse is stored within a set of tables. So let's start with Dataverse. So Dataverse is effectively a set of tables. So when you start a new environment, you get a set of tables available by default, like account, contacts, and so forth. But you can, of course, build your own tables. So you can also create columns, right? So columns um, of different types, text, multi-text, email, decimal, duration, and so forth. You can also apply behaviors, like you can set columns to be calculated or to have some logic behind. You can create relationships between tables, so of different types, one to multiple, multiple to one, multiple to multiple. You can also define behaviors for field mapping. For example, when you create one record related to another, you can pre-populate uh, some of the fields. You can also define some cascading rules when your related record is updated, deleted, or are reassigned. How do you want this to affect your related table and so forth? You can define business logic, so you have real-time workflows, so those are executed on creation or on update synchronously, so there is no gap uh, between the action, the trigger, and the action being executed. So when a record is created, assigned, or a field is changed, you can e execute additional actions, populate another field, or create another record somewhere else. Uh, you can also define business rules, like setting um, column values or setting fields are optional or required. And you can, of course, call the Dataverse uh, connector in Cloudflow, where effectively you can leverage Power Automate and Cloudflow to run additional logic. Security, so where you can define using security roles which um, tables a user can see or can update and so forth. You have record ownership. So each row within uh, a table also has an ownership. So you can define um, to, that someone can read and update a specific row within a table. He can see the, ta the whole um, table. He can see the data, but he can only, for example, update certain rows where he's the owner. There's also a concept of business units. So if you have organization with different team, different structure, you can say that, you know, um, a, a specific set of records is visible within my business unit, within my team, but users from another business units cannot see or cannot update my the records of my business units. And you can also define column level security. So each of the columns, you can say who can see them or who can update them. List and forms, so you can define list of records. So define the columns and then define the filters for your, your list. So you can have different type of list with a set of different columns and a set of different filters. You can have different type of list, of course. Um, you can have read-only lists, editable, grid, editable grids, subgrids. So subgrids are used within forms. 
Um, then you have forms, which have the main form. When you open the record, you can see the main uh, form being used to visualize and edit the record. But you also create quick uh, create forms or quick view forms to kind of play with the UI in your power apps. So lists and forms are essentially used in your power app. So the user interface behind building a model driven apps is dependent mostly on the tables you add into the model driven app and then the list and the forms will kind of form the ui the base of your ui um, and same goes for power pages so the list that you want to use the list of records that you want to use in power page you are going to select uh, lists from dataverse same as for the form the forms the layout of the screens and the form that you want to use on your power pages website is effectively being built on to your dataverse forms and last but not least dataverse is also accessible from power bi so effectively power bi has a connector to dataverse so you can quickly use that connector to extract and manipulate data and create reports based on dataverse uh, tables in power uh, bi and power virtual agents also has a connection via the uh, power automate um, connector to kind of leverage data within dataverse and use that data to feedback the responses um, that you might provide to a user via your chat so what are the main benefits of dataverse so dataverse is effectively the native data model and data storage for building your apps using power apps where effectively um, both technical and non-technical people can quickly jump in and rapidly build those robust applications Second, it offers a very rich uh, security model where you can specify role-based access, it has data encryption, and it ensures that your organization can safely manage their data and maintain a certain level of security and privacy, right? And finally, uh, it offers a simplified data management that you can use across many of your Microsoft application and the Microsoft ecosystem. Voila, I hope that you liked this video. And if that's the case, please give me a thumbs up and don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel to see um, notifications when I publish new content. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.